Hi everyone, thanks for joining me for the second part of Gamer's Journey to Japan. Now when I was in Japan, I felt, let's say, kind of uh, in a big amusement park. So many things to do, so many fun things and so many attractions. It doesn't matter where you go, even if you get lost, there's always something to see. Now of course the things that I enjoy doing the most is, well, games. Well, but not just games, video games I mean. I also find some really cool card shops and then I discovered how popular the card games are. And I really like those actually based on manga because they are so beautiful. I mean, I was looking at those cards like, like I'm in a museum. And by the way, some of those cards can be really expensive. You can reach like even hundreds, even thousands of dollars per single card. So this what you see is around 20, 50, 80 dollars, but I'm sure there are much more expensive ones out there. Now sometimes, uh, you know, in the evening I stay in the room working and some other times I went uh, at night just exploring the city and uh, this is in Tokyo, by the way. And the thing is that Tokyo feels like, like during the day at night, even if it's late at night, because the all the neon sign lights and so many people. This is the first time when I went to the Pokemon Center. I was actually playing a Pokemon Arcade, which is so much fun. And this is actually the first moment that I fell in love with Pokemon. I spent a lot of time there. This is actually an augmented reality. I know it looks weird, but you actually see it through the screen. The players wearing um, augmented reality headset that allows them to actually see the effects in real time. So there's actually a phone attached to the headset and you can actually play a game like this. This is super cool. I actually tried myself, play like an hour with the group. So definitely mixed reality can really create some really amazing gameplay experiences. And this is one of them. By the way, there are even tournaments for this one. Now if you want to learn more about this, just search for Hado. Hado in Japan and you can learn more about it. Now at night, of course, we go outside, there's so many things to see, but sometimes I just enjoy uh, just walking along the beach and uh, this was actually uh, near the beach, it was a beautiful animation on the ferris wheel. By the way, some of the photos that you've seen in the previous video was actually taken from there. This is a festival of the light in Osaka. It was just so beautiful. Just beautiful. I was there all night, even the other day, because I just enjoy walking through this lit street. So many balls, it's crazy. Just beautiful. So this is the time where you know I took a break from the action. So there's plenty of time to take a break and relax and plenty of time to do the other things that you enjoy doing. Also, next day, I think it was a few days after, I went to see some full foliage again. I think this was actually the peak uh, week where you actually you can see the full foliage, it's most beautiful colors. But of course, back to gaming! Well, this is from Osaka. This is actually the grand opening of the Pokemon Center Osaka DX. Now, it's not the first time we're actually visiting a Pokemon store, but this one was just amazing. And this is before the release of the Pokemon uh, Sword and Shield. Keep this in mind. And of course, once the game was out, I bought the game and played it first in my room in uh, Osaka. And I just fell in love with Pokemon. I just couldn't believe it. You need to understand that I wasn't into this at all before. The place was so cheerful, colorful, the beautiful dolls. It's just such an amazing place to be. And you just feel happy being there. Now, of course, I could have downloaded the game uh, from the store. 
but I just wanted to make it special. So I actually uh, bought the game, the physical copy. I bought a Pokemon Sword. <laughs> Not both of them, although there is a package for both of them. Just Pokemon Sword and uh, played in my room. Now actually you can see here me filming. This is from the outside. People waiting for the grand opening of the Pokemon. This is the grand opening of the uh, building itself, but also for the Pokemon Center or Sakadi X. So many people, young, many adults, all waiting to get inside. Now, not all of them for the Pokemon, but many of them actually did go to the Pokemon because it was super packed. And then we reached to the Pokemon Center store. <gasps> wow, this is so beautiful. I just couldn't believe that I get so excited from Pokemon store. But I came back so many times to this store. This was actually before, you can't just go there by the way, you need to wait in line. So that's what I did, I was actually waiting in line with all the other people and it's just, you know, this is only for the first day or maybe first couple of days because it was so packed. And on the way we came across a new jump shop as well, this is something I'll learn about a bit later on. When I of course fell in love with anime once I was in Japan and I bought so many anime books you don't know. So we are going towards the store uh, and this moment was amazing. We actually saw some beautiful large Pikachu figures. It's not figures, it's actually dolls. They're human inside. And it was, I was so happy. I felt like a child again. I was so excited to see this. And it's amazing seeing, you know, most of the people there were actually adults. And everybody just having fun and enjoying it. <sighs> no words. I just had so much fun that day. And of course the store itself. So colorful, so many Pokemon dolls, it's crazy. And I spent a lot of hours inside. And it's amazing seeing people actually packing things like this is a supermarket. They bought so many things, each one. I just was just, just shocked. Like it felt like it's for many people it's a necessity like food and when you have such an amazing experience in the shop how can you not fall in love with pokemon and of course i did now what you see here is actually a um, pokemon uh, kind of a browser which allows you to uh, check out all the different pokemons uh, it's really cool with a touch screen on a glass and just just so much fun to use and I discovered of course more about all the available Pokemons. Now remember the seller over there actually looking at me and seeing me enjoying this so much is laughing at I thought I just can't this is so much fun really I felt like a little kid again I was just enjoying this and I just couldn't stop. Eventually, I went to a restaurant nearby. I needed to relax from this amazing experience. Now, of course, when Pokemon uh, Sword and Shield came out, I bought it, as you can see here. Uh, and I went to the room and was so excited to play it. And I put the cartridge in. Uh, something good feeling about the physical you know, game when you, bought it, uh, you buy it and actually put the cartridge in the Nintendo Switch. Uh, and I played it. And I enjoyed it so, so much. So basically my life was exploring the outside, visiting many stores and there's the time where actually in the room trying out the different things, the games that I bought, uh, even magazines in Japanese which I don't know how to read Japanese, still I just enjoyed it. Uh, and also bought anime books uh, which I read, some in English, some in Japanese uh, as a souvenirs as you can see here. This is actually Snake World in Japanese which I bought and I tried to play it. Uh, and actually enjoy it without actually understanding Japanese. Some people already it actually helped me a bit. So I basically surrounded myself with everything about gaming, anime, and I just was... My mind was all over the place. Now yeah, I prepared for a laugh. When I first started the game, I actually tried to translate the Japanese using Google Translate. It was so funny! Later on, as I told you, people in Reddit helped me and I got it. No, I got it. I knew how to play it without actually uh, real time translation. But this was so funny, so I had to share it with you. Alright, now to the retro gaming stores. 
Super Potato was my favorite one, but I visit different ones. And this is the place where I enjoy spending time the most alongside the anime uh, also. I spend a lot of time with anime store. Uh, so as you see, tons of retro games. You can just browse. This is a, a museum for gaming. So many games. So many games that I didn't play. But probably some of them are so amazing. Gaming books. Gaming everything. This actually I owned when I was a child. Unbelievable. And now actually they are selling them. And of course they are much more expensive now. Because uh, not so many of them actually remain. And by the way some of them are made by Nintendo. Which I realized I owned a Nintendo console when I was so young. Well if you can call it a console. This is one you can see Bandai Electronics. And these are more retro games. They have games for... By the way, you can buy everything here. And they actually also sell uh, consoles. Uh, um, retro consoles. If you want to play those games uh, in your home. These are games for uh, Super Famicom as you can see. This is Super Mario World you see from 1990. And what you're going to see here is the Nintendo Virtual Boy. And I tried it. Yeah, you can actually use it. Use it in the store. This one, I don't remember for which uh, console it is. This is another one uh, for the Virtual Boy, Nintendo. So it gives you a stereoscopic view, of course, as you can see. This is for Wonderswan, which is a handheld game console released in Japan by Bandai. Uh, Whew, history. What you've seen before is the Sega Master System, which I actually owned. And this, I think, was one of my best memories of uh, retro games are from this console. And lots of stuff. There were some controllers. Everything you want related to retro games, you're going to find in this chain of stores called Super Potato. And other ones, of course, as well. These are probably more of the rare games behind Cabinet. Uh, and of course, if you are searching for, if you are a collector, searching for rare items, uh, rare games, controller, uh, consoles, you can set, you can find everything there. There's the Sega Master System, which you can actually buy. Game Boy colors with all the variety of colors, even the transparent ones. Uh, this is for uh, Game Boy Advance. This is Castlevania Harmony of Dissonance, released in Japan. Dragon Ball Z and so so many other games and of course if you want to enjoy retro gaming try out you know those games that we actually haven't tried before even a, ch a chance uh, you can actually buy the console and games just in one shop and just go home and enjoy those retro games and see how it was like playing those uh, old games as I told you before in the previous video, one of the things that I enjoyed is searching actually for games which I used to play as a child. Uh, this is why this store was so nostalgic to me and I used to spend all day there. I spent many hours each time I was there. Because you just can't go through, there are so many games. But sometimes I just went to the seller and uh, asked them, do you have this game, this game? Uh, you know, uh, I think most of the games that they ask are for the... Uh, uh, Sega Master System, although I asked for Commodore 64 and they told me that it's actually not a console. It's kind of personal computer, so they don't have Commodore 64 games. I was a bit disappointed. So this is the entrance for the Super Potato Store. This is in Osaka, in Namba, uh, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's a Namba. Uh, this is another store, not found from the other one that I was visiting. And just keep in mind there are many different stores there uh, which can just, you know, uh, just go and take a look and you always find something new and interesting in other stores as well. I remember also buying the first Civilization game there and others which I can't remember right now. So this is all about exploration, discovery, discovery of video games. So sometimes I enjoy just getting lost, you know, in the outdoors, 
And in these type of stores, I just enjoy getting lost indoors. This is so much fun. So the thing is that when we play games, we play, you know, a few games per year, but there are so many games out there, so many games that were actually developed that we won't get a chance to play unless we are a bit curious and don't mind kind of uh, jumping into older system just compared to just waiting to what comes next and you know give those games a chance they are really amazing games uh, that you can play without actually waiting just buy a uh, retro gaming console and try out different games so this is it for the second part more coming i hope you enjoy this i have plenty to share when it comes to uh, gaming in japan so many discoveries and of course i'm going to share more very soon thanks for watching bye bye